Remember before COVID-19, when we could go to shows or celebrate in person or have family gatherings where the only worry was when someone was going to talk politics? Let's get back to that. Let's get vaccinated. COVID-19 vaccines are safe, effective, and free. Sure, we'll have to keep wearing masks for a while, but you know what? This is the start. Go to covid19.nj.gov slash vaccine to register for your vaccination. Remember traveling somewhere? Anywhere? Yeah, let's get back to that. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of Fantasy Hockey X for a Monday night. That's right. We are finally through round one of the NHL playoffs. It took long enough. Maybe it took too long. Either way, it's now over. The Montreal Canadiens have come back from a 3-1 series deficit to defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs in seven games. If you're from Toronto, you're probably as stunned as anybody right now. Maybe even more so. Some are not surprised in the least. However, it actually happened. Hard as it is to believe. So, all the playoff matchups are set. Montreal will travel to Winnipeg to face the Winnipeg Jets starting Wednesday night. As a matter of fact, the first three games are scheduled which is good. Uh, The only one that isn't that you would see on most of the other schedules right now is game four. Game four is a question mark right now as to what time it will be. We know it will be sometime on Sunday night. It's just going to depend on when they decide to schedule the other contest that is on Sunday, and that is going to be the key. So, basically, uh, right now, as of as this moment, uh, Wednesday night, Montreal opens up in Winnipeg at 7.30. It, for, in the States, it'll be on NBC Sports Network. Uh, in Canada, you have the option of uh, TVA or CBC and Sportsnet. Uh, you'll have the same options on Friday night as well. Uh, Sunday night, as of right now, the game is on NBC Sports Network in the States at 6, along with Sportsnet and TVA. Um, Like we said, Monday night is a question mark. Uh, Don't know yet how that is going to go. But when we know, we will get that information to you as soon as possible. Uh, Like I said again... The one and only issue is basically would be right now game five of the Boston New York series. Um, how much does the NHL try to stagger this? Uh, for example, tonight, uh, different circumstances because you had a game seven going on in round one with simultane- almost simultaneously ha- seeing a game two from round two. So you had Boston and New York playing each other at 7.30, a half hour after the 7 o'clock start from Toronto, between Toronto and Montreal. Now, what what is to come of everything? That, of course, is is the quick focus of the show tonight, and that is this. If you watched any part of tonight's uh, final final game of round one, you will quickly realize that tonight was just not usual or normal in any way. I mean, if you looked if you looked at most of the numbers, as scary as this sounds. Montreal played a perfect, perfectly minimalistic game in every way, shape, and form. First off, almost the entire first two periods were played at even strength, except for all of about 40-something seconds.
let that sink in for, for a second. All about 42 seconds were played at what amounted to be even strength. Um, yeah, it was kind of a goofy sort of game, like most had said. But that's how this series kind of went. I mean, it, re it really is something. No way, no way you could have expected this. Yep. Here we are. Now, like we said, final final score final score was three one. Game was probably closer than that. Um, like we said, possession was almost possession was almost even. Um, shots on goal at even strength wound up being almost even as well. Scoring chances were not. Uh, scoring chances, especially in the second half of the game, were a little more tilted towards Montreal. Well, no, we're kidding. It was Toronto, of course. Uh, Toronto, as a matter of fact, had, uh, by, by our rough math, 13 of the last 18 chances. And yet, despite that, and this is this is where where it's crazy. Montreal only had one high danger scoring chance in this game at even strength. One. That's it. You're not going to advance in the playoffs if your offense is that anemic. It is rough. It is not an easy go when your offense completely dries up. And that is what basically what Toronto's offense did over the final three games of the series. Toronto just did not have an answer for the way Montreal was playing. That is the cold reality. Yes. Everybody can sit there and say, well, Carey Price had this wonderful save percentage and everything else, and that is very much true. If you threw out, if you threw out game two, he had an unbelievable search. Okay. That's just, that's just the cold reality of what happened tonight. For Toronto, it's rough. There's no doubt about it. There's no easy way of going. We're trying to sugarcoat this. It's bad in every way. I mean, you you look at some, some of the, the numbers and everything else, and you just go, my word. Now, I mean... Great, great, great example of this. Mitch Marner had four assists. No goals again. People forget last year, even against, you know, the play in the qualification run against Columbus. Marner also had four assists. He had no goals. This is a player that has not had now not had a postseason goal in two seasons. Okay, so in eleven games with thirty-two shots, so basically three shots a night, he has had scored a grand total of zero goals. Now this is a player that typically shoots. A right, right around 11% on the season. In his first three off playoff seasons, he was right around 11% again. Question has to kind of be asked in some casual way, what the heck is going on? What is the problem? Now, Now, 
you know, there's obviously other problems. Uh, look, can't be disputed. It wasn't just necessarily Mitch Marner. I mean, Austin Matthews was just as invisible. I mean, tonight, Austin Matthews had three block shots on goal, and I think that was his most often. That was his biggest contribution tonight. That's crazy. And basically, Matthews had one really good game in game two. And that was it. I mean, he had one assist other than in that three three point outburst in game two. He had one assist the rest of the series. I mean, there's a lot of bizarre numbers that you could take away from this. Um So in seven games, he had four points. That's pretty crazy. Um, I don't, I mean, you, you, you consider that basically he ended up with what, 34, 35 shots on goal and had one goal. That's it. There's fantasy dud, and then there's a big giant thud. So, for the official numbers, let's see here. Matthews had... I'm sorry, he was actually... I'm sorry, he was credited with an assist. So, that's five points in seven games. Stand corrected. And, indeed, did have 35 shots on goal in seven games. But, again, one goal on 35 shots, ladies and gentlemen, that is less than a 3% shooting percentage. That is his lowest of his entire career in the playoffs in in five five playoff seasons that's his lowest and it's not close obviously again not the only player look Jack Campbell did everything he could he won three games for this team he had a 934 Sabres I don't know I don't know what else Jack Campbell could have done I know some people say, well, if he had this shot or he had stopped this shot, that doesn't matter. That really does not matter right now. Your team has to score goals to advance in the playoffs. When you don't do that, you're not winning. You generate one scoring, you generate one high danger scoring chance in 60 minutes of regulation. One. One. Wow. I mean, there's no words for it. There is no words for that. I mean, that is just wow. I mean, that is on another level of bad. So you have to think about it that way. If you're if you're Toronto, you're going in the next season and realizing that hey, you're going back into the Atlantic Division, baby. That is the reality. So you are welcoming back teams like Boston, Tampa. Yeah. Oh, Florida, too. You're not going to be playing the Vancouver's of the world, the Edmonton's, the Calgary's, the teams that you cleaned up on, basically. And that is where the crux of the fans' frustration comes in, and some of the media as well. This probably was Toronto's best shot at advancing far into the playoffs with, with this team currently made up as it is. That seems to be the reality of it all. Now, my question to anybody that's listening out there is this. 
would you trade Mitch Marner at this point? Could you get close to anywhere near close, never mind close, but anywhere near close to fair market value for a player who makes as much as he does? He's making over $10 million a year. But that, again, that that's yeah. that's the problem. Too many fantasy duds from Toronto. And the last three games in particular, it's been rough. I mean, other than other than say Jack Campbell, what was it? William Nylander? I mean, Jake Muzzin got hurt, unfortunately, and that probably was another reason why Toronto had such trouble tonight getting out of their own zone at times and getting out of their own way. Now, like we said, there was one player that pr- pretty much showed up for Mont- for Toronto against Montreal all series long. And you could argue that that indeed was William Nylander. I mean, Nylander, look, let's put it this way. And the irony is this. Nylander, through the first three, three his three first three postseasons, did little or nothing. I mean, look. This 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 was a player that legitimately, you know, a few points here, a few points there, a few points there, but one goal, one goal, one goal. Didn't average much in the way of shots per game. Didn't average. I mean, really, other than, I mean, his rookie year was kind of a goofball, different type of deal anyway. But he did average nearly four points, four shots a game. Yeah. Overall, and it's kind of Nylander had a game winning goal. He had just nineteen. He had just nineteen shots on goal um, in the first six games. He had a couple more in game seven. He had an assist, as a matter of fact. Actually, no, 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 no. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. No, no. He did. He scored a goal. Sorry, sorry. Thinking wrong. Think thinking Jason Spezza, who again, ironically, um, managed to get more points than yeah, anybody could have expected. But basically, if you look at this, Elander had five goals in seven games. He had five goals on twenty-one shots. Almost twenty. Twenty-three percent. Almost 25. Almost one in every four shots went in. He did everything you could ask. Same could be probably said for uh, Jason Spezza. He did pretty much everything you could ask. Now, again, it comes down to just there just was not enough. There was not enough production from other players. And it is very much... A reality. I mean, you, again, you look at you look at Jason Spezza for what is worth. Spezza had had three goals and two assists in this series for five points in seven games, playing fourth line minutes. He played fourth line minutes, mind you. Okay, Dallas a few years back he was not. He was playing top six minutes. At least in year one, and he had 13 points in 13 games. Okay, this was a different type of story. He was playing maybe 11, 10, 11 minutes a night. So, and he was still able to do what he did. That's something else. Okay. Now, like we mentioned, you know, from from the fantasy side of things, you had to give Carey Price a ton of credit. I mean, look, Corey Perry scored in this game. That's kind of it's kind of all you need to know.
That's crazy. The players that you did not expect for them to come through in the way that they did is something else. And, like, you know, we... Here's where it gets tough. And this is this is kind of the truthful part in it, in it all, and this is where we go. Okay, well, you know, full transparency, that sort of thing. I do not think that the Montreal Canadiens had a chance to come back in this series. I didn't think they had a chance to even win tonight. I thought they could keep it close. But I figured inevitably at some point, Toronto is going to find a way to flip a switch and do just enough to win. Now, would it have been in regulation or overtime? I don't know. But my prediction was overtime. But you have to give you have to give Montreal every, every, every bit of credit for finding a way. And look, Unlike unlike games five and six, they held on to the lead. They held on this time. Apparently, apparently three goals was a safe enough margin. But again, you have to you have to give credit to where credit is due. You have to you have to tip your tip your cap to players. Particularly Philip Dano, who look, Dano got awful at times during the regular season. Could not match up well against Austin Matthews in the regular season. Look, Matthews at one point had eight goals in nine games against Montreal. He had one goal in this round. One. That's it. He had one goal. You know, one goal and four assists. That's not going to get done. Like we said, the only player that really had a lot of success against Montreal in this round was William Nienlander, who had five goals and eight points. And look, Toronto has to find players that are able to produce in the playoffs. They have to find a way. I don't know how you do that. I don't I don't know if they have to break everything up. I don't think they have to do that. But they need they need something. I mean, look. Jason Spezza scored three times in the playoffs. And that, ladies and gentlemen. was enough to lead them. I mean, we went we went through we went through quanhockey.com and a couple other numbers. I mean, there were a lot of puzzling numbers from tonight's game and that have tons of fantasy relevance and and fantasy implications going forward because look. There is no way we can sit there and go what the heck is going to happen in the next round. To be perfectly honest, I don't know. It is gonna be. It is going to be rough, to say the least. Um, I mean, there are a lot of arguments and debates to this. Because if you go, if you go. You go down the list, and you go down a ways down through this, through these lists. I mean, you had Alexander Kerfoot, who had had six points in seven games.
you go down looking for the leading Montreal scorer. Okay. Let's see something crazy as anything. You're not going to find him. Top 50, not going to find him. Nope. Next page, Joel Armia had four had four points. You know who also had four points in the playoffs this year? Tom McDavid. Like we said, Austin Matthews had five. I mean, it is it is pretty crazy. Now Tyler Tyler DeFoley actually led led led. Canadians, I believe, um, rough, using rough, rough math. So, I mean, Jasperi Katakami uh, had three goals, including probably one of the most clutch ones in overtime. Nick Suzuki had a bunch had had more than had as many points as Connor McDavid. I mean, you look through. Let's put it this way: you look through. It gets interesting quick. Like you said, Suzuki had four points. Foley led all Montreal scorers with five. He had two goals and three assists. Okay. You know, even Eric Stahl had four points. Basically playing what amounted to be a fourth-line role. For what it's worth, you know, Philip Deneau contributed in the system. And that was his first point in this area. But it was what he did on the defensive side of things that got got him the most notice. And again, I mean, look, Montreal did not really have the offensive guns in this series, or in theory, shouldn't have been able to keep up in this series. But because Gary Price was able to play as good as he did, and the defense was able to hold just just enough. They were able to bend but not break. That was a huge, huge reason and why they were able to win the series. And look, Cole Caulfield was extremely effective with, with Suzuki. I mean, it was obvious that these two have instant chemistry. Uh, maybe not so much tonight, but they didn't need him tonight. I really did. So, again, Dominique Ducharme has to be given a good deal of credit. Whether any of us like to admit it or not. Now, is, is, is Montreal a team you can really rely on fantasy hockey-wise throughout the rest of the playoffs? The answer is probably no. I mean, nobody really knows now what's going to happen against Winnipeg. Winnipeg is favored in the series. That much is known. But to sit there and go, well, hey, you know, such and such guy is going to fall off the fantasy cliff or this guy is going to uh, rise up and do something unbelievable, it's tough to say. It, it really is. And that kind of is the uh, the ongoing dilemma with what has happened. But it'll be said now, it'll be said many, many times again, the Montreal Canadiens have advanced to the second round of the NHL playoffs by defeating the Toronto Maple Leafs in seven games. Wow. Simply wow. 
what we're going to try and do is we're going to mix in a little bit of uh, fantasy going forward with a little bit of the you know a little bit of Montreal Canadiens news and such. Um, as people may or may not know, I am on the on the beat for with the with the Montreal Canadiens uh, for this for this play. Basically, the rest the right for the regular season most of the regular season, and then into the playoffs. The, like I said, again, to offer a prediction between Montreal and Winnipeg, I have no clue. Um, now, the other game tonight was something else in of, it, in of itself, too. Uh, Boston jumped out to a one nothing lead, looked dominant, looked like it was going to be more of the same. And then they just could not score. Montreal rallied back. Well, not Montreal. Sorry, kids. The Islanders rallied back. Gee, red, white, and blue. Yeah, you know, red, the red, blue. Ugh. Color schemes will drive you nuts. Now, but the Islanders scored three straight goals, and it looked like, to be honest, it looked like the Islanders are going to run away with this game. Then Boston came back. Boston scored a couple goals in the third period, tied it up. Looked like they might actually win it in regulation then. Then in overtime, of all the people that would have a breakaway, Casey Sezikis, of, I mean, Casey Sezikis, fourth line center. And argue, you could make an argument that he's more of a middle six guy in fourth line clothing. But. Give him credit. Got a breakaway in overtime, and he converted it. He got the puck past Tukarask in overtime to even the series and send the best of seven back to the Nassau Veteran Memorial. I'll see him tied at one. And yes. Boston's top line did spearhead that comeback. And they were a huge reason in that comeback. And that should concern the bejesus out of out of the Islanders again. Because look, it happened again. The difference is this time is the Islanders were able to absorb it and then win. I mean, there's a lot of big differences in this here in this game. It was not anything like game one. Look, game one. Expected goals for Boston's was 3.27. The Islanders was 0.81 at even at even strength. High danger scoring chances were 12 to Boston. Okay, tonight. Expected goals for was 2.53 for Boston and 2.28 for the Islanders. And it was fairly even throughout. Except for, ironically, where the score effects took place in the third period. And then the second period that the Islanders dominated. The Islanders, I mean, really, really after the first period, held Boston at bay. At even strength out the first period, the Islanders actually had six of the final nine score, high danger scoring chances in the game. Possession wise, pretty much after the first period was mostly even. It was pretty close. I mean, very, very, very slight edge to Boston, but not by much. So, again, there's that. Now, I guess in the sense of the series, there's two days off. Game three is Thursday from Long Island. That'll make somewhat of a difference, I'm sure. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But again, expect the unexpected. Kind of a rule of thumb in these playoffs. It really is. And you 
you just have to sit there. <laughs> and as hard as this is to believe for people listening there out there, here's three more, basically two and a half to three more rounds of this. Oh, by the way, and just as a final little bit of an aside, Canada plays Finland at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Can you imagine if they lose that game? What can't, I can't, look, Toronto is in a bad enough mood as it is. I can't imagine what it would be like if, if Canada, I look, 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 the world, the world championships don't have nearly the meaning that they usually do, especially the last two years with the pandemic. But for Canada, not even to make the quarterfinal, I mean, you have basically eight teams. I mean, you should be able to slot in somewhere. That's rough. And, you know, look, it just one of, it's one of those just oddball type years where you, you just sit there and really last year, kind of same thing. You just kind of tip your hat to the pandemic and go, okay, it's just going to be different. And yet, God, if you're, Tor look, if you're Toronto, it happened again. It happened again. Well, that is it for now. For Chris Wassel and Fantasy Hockey X via the Full Press uh, radio network and Full Press coverage, I uh, want to thank everybody, uh, Ian Glendon, Mary Pam, uh, pretty much everyone that listens in from there. And, of course, you can listen to the show on iTunes. Uh, and through the, like we said, the full press coverage network. We will try and do this again Wednesday night, hopefully. Until then, be safe out there. And good night. The COVID-19 vaccines were developed and tested within stringent guidelines from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. That this happened faster than usual is due to the urgency of this pandemic and the extraordinary collaboration of dedicated scientists around the world. Hear more from New Jersey doctors about COVID-19 at nj.gov slash health slash vaxfax. That's nj.gov slash health slash V-A-X-F-A-C-T-S.